Hello dear subscribers and viewers of this five basics I welcome you again for this moment where we want to discuss the word of God I do believe we want to see how things are working and today we want to see something about the day of the Lord the coming of the Lord this is for the information and also it's for waking us up from our slumbering. What I want to say this one. Today's you hear believers and many people who are worshiping the church. They say, Jesus come, Jesus come, you want the day of the Lord, you go to the churches. You hear every member, they say, Maranatha, Jesus Christ is coming, Maranatha, Jesus is coming. So everyone is, is just, you hear, you don't sense, you don't hear the, a person saying, I don't want Jesus Christ to come. So everyone is saying, Jesus Christ, come, come. But do we mean what we say? And do we know what the day of the Lord is like? So that's the message of today I want to share with you. My friend, pay your attention till the end of this video. Don't jump off. Don't go. Don't skip. Just bear with me. You may face some interruption. It's just okay. But focus on this message and that you may understand. And at the end, uh, I encourage you to share. Yes, to share. If you can share the video, you can download it. If you can like, if you can subscribe, both are good, okay? For the glory of the Lord. So my friend, let us go to the book of Amos. The book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 18. And we are going to uh, lead up to 20. Uh, the book of Amos, uh, chapter 5, verse 18, up to 20. This is where we are going to focus our message. Uh, it say this one, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. So what do we see? You know, Israelites were desiring the day of the Lord. And this prophet knew them and he knew God. You know, the, goodness, the good thing about prophets they knew God and they saw people. So they are working with God and they're working with people. And so they know they knew God and they looked at the people how they lived and then they said they desire the, the day of the Lord. And he had to tell them straight, you, war unto you. He told them war. That, you that desire the day of the Lord. You want it to come. You don't know how it is. To what the end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. People, they desire the coming of the Lord. We know, I want to tell you something. When Jesus Christ will be coming, you know this, we see this island. We'll be learning. Mountains, we'll, the shaking will make even, you don't see even any mountains. We are, they are going to disappear. Because they were not here. They came from somewhere, okay? God not created this world, this world with a lot of mountains like this one. They happen. So God can tell them and they can disappear. So when Jesus Christ comes, that day, it will be the day of darkness and not of light. I want to talk about this. Because some people, they are, telling, they are deceiving themselves. But my friend, we want to be ready. We have to be told the truth. There is no moment of telling you a lie. To just pamper you and telling you, oh, don't worry. The day of the day is going to be good. Just, just relax. Go to the church. My friend, we have to be told the truth. Listen, verse 19, as if a man did free from a lion, then I want to tell you this, that you may understand what I mean. Everyone, no matter what denomination are you coming from or are you worshipping at, I want you to listen. Verse 19, it talks this one. As if a man did free from a lion, and a bear met him, or went into the house and laid his hand on the wall, and the serpent beat him. Beat, bite, okay. And the serpent bite him. So, my friend, I want to find this. This is, I believe it is going to help you. What is he talking? It's like, he's telling people that, you know, some people say, I've run from, I'm free. Uh, that the man did flee from the lion. At hey, I was a drunkard. I was drinking and at least now I'm in the church. But he's telling you, and, the, and then entering the church, you met the bear. 
You, st- you don't think that you are safe. I want to give you an example like this. One. Maybe you are a drunkard, then you entered the church, you became an hypocrite and a very proud person. So what do you learn away from? And you desire the word of God. You, get, you go into the church, you are stealing God's money. You might be saving as a pastor, but you know what you are doing. I do believe. There are people who are just as if they're the world. They don't act as if they are working for the church and for God. You know, God sometimes seems to be silent. I think God is so merciful, you know. The things happening, apart from the word, even in the church, but God keeps quiet. Do you know his, uh, his long-suffering when he comes on his day? My friend, you better get ready. And he went into the house and learned his end and the wall, and the serpent bite him, beat him. So my friend, I want, I want to say this. What Amos was saying is this one, that the people, they think they are safe because they have learned something. They have, they are, okay, I was, uh, I, was, it's, I was maybe a harrod. I was selling myself. Maybe I was a thief. I was a drunkard. I was a womanizer. I was whatever you, habit that you had. And so it became a new creature that now I've come. I don't steal anymore because I'm in the church. So the day of the Lord has come. So if you look up, your, your back life, that I was a sinner now, at least I'm better than that. My friend, you are not safe. Really, you are not safe because many people, they're saying, God, we did this in your way. They thought they were good and God said, hey, go away, I don't know you. Because people do not want to look into their life into deeper relationship, into deeper consecration of the Lord. People, they, they are living the partial Christianity. That's what is killing us. Superficial Christianity is killing us. It makes us to be comfortable. I want to live in my comfort zone. Don't disturb me with the hard doctrines. I was a sinner and now I'm not. I was drinking and I'm not drinking. But the person you find backbiting his friends. You find a person sleeping slowly with ladies silently, saying that everyone has a weakness. We are not perfect. So use your extra sleeping with other people in the church. Yes, we are weak. Actually, yes, we are weak. But you should not tolerate such kind of sin. And don't tell people your weakness. Who told you to tell people that you are weak? You just stay, fight with God yourself. Nobody is going to pull you to heaven. You are going to take yourself to heaven by your faith in Jesus Christ. So don't, you know, sometimes people, they seek relief. Because they, they are self, they are being judged. They sense self-guilt. And so they want to relieve that pain by telling others, you know, we all are sinners. And when people say, yes, nobody who has no sin here, yes. Okay, so what? You want to get a relief. My friend, salvation is you knowing God. If you can talk to God, is your friend. He talks to you every day. He leads you. You are led by the Holy Spirit. Hey, keep doing your sin. Don't worry about it. If you are talking to God himself, you are living in him. You have the heaven. Talk to God as a friend. Let him lead you. You have heaven. Do I have to tell you, be perfect? Because God himself, you know he's holy. So when you are doing sin, you will tell you, my friend, you are going to fight. I cannot stay with you if you are doing this thing. Have you missed the power? But this, you don't need even God to tell you that. Your relationship will actually make you keep aside all those, those things. And the day of the Lord for you will be good. You want it not because you want to, to have a peace of life. You know some people, they want to go to heaven because... Now they have tried their best to win money and still things are not working well. So they want to go to where everything is free. Selfish ambition. But we want the day of the Lord. But are we ready? Are we really ready? You said, some people they say, now I'm keeping the Sabbath. I was the Sunday worshiper. I've known the truth. I've known something about the Sabbath. I've known about the sanctuary. What Jesus Christ is doing as a high priest. I've known the, I know the state of the dead. 
you are like a person who lie, ran away from the lion and then you, you met the bear. Learning away from the bear, then you have met the devil himself in the church. What? My friend, I don't say the church is bad. The church is good. But the devil, is, God has not said, you don't have to enter into to my church. It's not written anywhere. If he was able to face Jesus Christ, the son of God, who are you? That's why you should not build your faith on people. Don't. Don't try to build your faith on people. Don't depend. And it's, the Bible says it's cursed the person who trusts and puts trust on men. So we don't have to trust people. We have to trust God. And we have to have a vertical relationship with God to make sure it's very 100%. You know, if you love God, you will love your neighbor. I tell you, that's why what is that is not this. It's this. You, you don't say this. Lily, what are you drawing this? You start this. Okay. You start a vertical relationship. Then after that, you go to horizontal relationship. If you make things well with Jesus, your relationship with the people, it won't be a problem. It won't be a problem. Because if you offend any person, because you talk to God, he will tell you, my son, this is not right. You don't even need the, you don't even need the, uh, you don't even need a person to come and tell you. You are godly because of the person. You know, people, they think that we worship God with a far distance. No, God is a cross, is a person, he talks, he speaks, he, he is grieved and whatever things happen to the person. And so you don't have to say that I worship God. And do you know that you talk to him? Mm, I don't know. How are you living? I'm a Christian. Why? I keep the law. Then what? Do you have any personal relationship? Yes. How? I study the Bible. He talks to me to the Bible. When I read the verses, then he talks to me. Do you have assurance? What if one day he comes and says, I don't know you? Will you urge against him and say, uh, no, 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 no. You cannot say that you don't know me. And I say, show me and, go, and you might tell him that, you know, we have been talking together. I know you. And actually when he comes, we don't know the face of Jesus Christ because we have been used to him. He's coming. We tell us, this is the person you have been waiting for. That's according to Job. Job or Isaiah. This is the God that you have been waiting for. My friend, I want to encourage you. The day of the Lord is coming. It's not that simple day that you can try to think, let it come, let it come. It's better you keep your eyes on Jesus. You consecrate yourself, forget about things of the world. They are not going to help you. They are taking you to hell. You are going to hell with you and all the things you have because they are going to burn. Yes, you have to have things. I don't, I'm not against the material idea. But focusing on these things and sin and temporal pleasures Sexual pleasures, eating whatever you want because it's just a sweet, delicious. My friend, and you want the day of the Lord. Yes, he's coming, but it will be what? Verse 20. Say this one. Uh, it says, Shall not the day of the Lord be of darkness and not light, even very dark, and no brightness, no brightness in it? That is Amos 5, 18, up 20. You have to read. Just take your Bible. I believe you have the Bible. Read these verses yourself. Just read. I've not, I won't put them here to read with you on the screen. I want you to go find the Bible here. When you finish reading this, or if you have the Bible aside, you can open if you don't use the same phone to have the Bible. If you have the Bible, hard copy. And I encourage you to have the hard copy. And you want a lot of I want God to come. Still, you depend on the soft copy. You have no surety of that thing. Because at any time, they can choose to shut it down. I have the phone here. It shuts down sometimes. You find shutting down even the whole day. It shuts itself. I took it the, to, the, to the mechanic. Mechanic or what? He helped it and it, it became normal. But someday, it was shutting down. So it happens. These things, they have not been trusted, this one. If you depend on the Bible of this one, you have to have it. Sometimes you can read. Myself, I have different Bible versions here. Because to have all versions, add a copy, it's difficult. 
But at least you need to have this hard copy. When things happen, you have a backup. So my friend, I want to encourage you. Because God loves us, that's why he warns us. God does not hate us to warn us that, hey, my sons and daughters, you desire my coming. Do you know how do I come? Do you know that when I come, there's no second chance? There's no restitution that I can make things at least. When God says, it's not like exam that when you do exam, university exams, when you fail, there's a supplementary. And when it's supplementary, you fail, there's a care over. This is not. This is when you miss it, it's done. It's done. You are going to discontinue. My friend, you need and I need to consider ourselves. We are waiting for the day of the Lord, the day of the judgment, when Jesus Christ comes. Do we know where will we stand? Do we know Jesus? Have we given our life completely to Jesus? Have we paid more price to seek Jesus? The price that we put to think about him, money, to study about him, money, to, to, to work hard 24 hours, working, non sleeping, seeking for money. Do we have at least half of that energy seeking for Jesus? My friend, you want the, word of the, Lord, the day of the Lord. You know the price for that he paid for. What you want, do you know the price? The price of it is the blood of the Son of God. So I've, ex- saying that to go out is to, to see the day of the Lord and its blindness. It takes a sacrifice. I'm not talking about being a legalist. Legalism, they, it won't take you. You're just wasting your time. But it's not actually wasting your time hundred percent because you become a good, a good member of the society. But it won't help you. You want to go to heaven. You will be a good person because you want to kill people. You want to cheat the other people. You will be a good person, a new creature, but not a member of a new creation. This is for those who don't want Jesus Christ and they want the law alone. And they are more serious about it until they can judge other people saying this is not going to heaven. I know we are sick on that. But I want to tell you, my friend, get prepared. The day of the Lord is coming. Everyone has to bear it. Everyone will stand on his. So I encourage you, this is the moment where we need to make changes of our lives and seek Jesus every day. Consecrate our lives to him. Because by having Jesus, we are more than safe. We are more than safe because he is God. When you know God, you don't worry. For example, just like a person who has prepared the banquet, Somewhere where you go and eat. And you know the one who is preparing everything is your father or your brother, whom you have been praying together for all of your life. When you go a person, who are you? You say, I know the person who is preparing. And you can call him, hey, brother or father, I'm here. He will come. Or you say, some people, they say, give them the phone. And they are going to talk to him using your phone. Hey, talk to him. Hey, somebody, let that, don't bother that person. Let him come. So if you know Jesus, who is the king? Who is God? My friend, don't bother. The day of the Lord for you, it's a good day. It has no problem. If you know Jesus, what can I say against you? Nothing. If you know Jesus, you just, just jump up and down. Because you have eternal life. You know the one who is preparing something for you. And he said, I'm going to prepare a place. I will come. So don't worry. If you know Jesus, cheer up. But keep up what you have, been, you have been given. Because the devil is working to make sure you deny Jesus. But never, never, no matter how sinful you become, how, much, how, how long you fall, how many times you fall into sin, but never say, I don't want Jesus. Never say that, because that's the moment when you cross your door. But please, the day of the Lord is coming. For those who are not ready, it will be the day of darkness and no brightness in it. It's very dark, strange. But for those who know Jesus, it's a glorious day. It's a joyful day. It's an amazing and marvelous day.
Get prepared for that. May God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.